baby, it's gonna be a scorcher today, my friends. Good thing I have air conditioning. Today's loaf of bread comes to us by way of Henry Miller, who's fast becoming one of my most regular contributors. And he writes, the moment one gives close attention to anything, even a blade of grass, it becomes a mysterious, awesome, indescribably magnificent world in itself. Reminiscent of Abraham Maslow, who said the secret is to see the sacred in the ordinary. Henry Miller goes at it from the same angle. He says when we pay close attention to anything, even something as simple and mundane as a blade of grass, it becomes this wondrous, mysterious, indescribable world in itself. I've had this experience before where something very commonplace all of a sudden stood out with great significance and great beauty and wonder. And so I know exactly what Henry Miller is talking about, or at least I think I do. And in my estimation, the key to paying close attention in this manner is to shut down the mind. As I've said many, many times before, the mind creates a barrier between things as they are and ourselves. And so when we approach the world, when we approach things as they are through this filter, we don't actually experience the world. We don't actually experience the events that are happening and the people that surround us. What we experience is the veil of mind. And through this veil, which is translucent, the world is there, but we're always separated. And so when we look at a blade of grass, we don't actually see a blade of grass. We see what the mind tells us about the blade of grass. Most of the time, we don't even see the blade of grass because the mind dismisses it. It's labeled and dismissed. Tree, dismissed. Grass, dismissed. Sky, dismissed. We know what it is. It has no practical value to us at this point, so why should we dwell on it any longer? That's the practical mind talking right there. And maybe you're thinking the very same thing as we speak. Maybe you're thinking, well, that's nice and good, Henry Miller and Ollie, but who has time to just sit there and look at a blade of grass? And more importantly, if you have that kind of time, why would you waste it on such a pointless endeavor? If this is what you're thinking right now, I would suggest that maybe you should listen closely and you should examine the thing that is producing these thoughts because once again, they are not your own. They are thoughts that have been conditioned deeply by this culture that we live in. This culture that sees idle time as wasted time. This culture that sees everything in terms of productivity and maximizing, maximizing profits maximizing pleasure, maximizing entertainment. See, for people raised in this culture, the idea that we could sit down for an hour and contemplate a tree or go for a hike in nature and with no goal in mind, well, it can be a little disconcerting for people from that culture. So what I recommend is that you listen closely when your mind tells you these things, when it dismisses ideas and notions like the one I just shared with you. Because the mind is the thing that gets in the fucking way, my friends. It's the thing that gets in the way of us experiencing this beautiful, mysterious, miraculous thing we call reality. And so, of course, the mind is going to try to convince you not to do this. It's going to try to convince you not to try and actually experience things as they are. Because to do so means shutting the mind down. It means quieting the mind and it means bypassing the mind so that you can experience things directly directly I had a person comment on one of my videos recently and talk about the ego and I told this person I think that the mind produces the ego and in fact I think the ego is this false self that the mind puts together based on conditioning and identifying markers labels etc etc 
Sometimes this product of the mind turns around and begins to use the mind for its own purposes because the ego, like all quote-unquote entities, wants to survive. It has a sense of being. It's the feeling that you get when you take pride in some identifying marker, some label or some ism that you really hold dearly. That's the ego. It wants to survive and it survives through these identifications and through its ability to manipulate you and to convince you that you and it are one and the same. The moment you realize you are not the ego, the moment you realize the thing you thought you were is not it, that's the end of the ego. At least that's the end of the ego's dominance. That's the end of the ego's dominance over you. And in a way, it's the end of the mind's dominance over you because, as I said, they're both one and the same. So don't let your ego convince you that idle time is wasted time. And the next opportunity you get to truly contemplate and experience the things that are going on around you, do yourself a favor and take that time. And then you'll see that Henry Miller is spot on, right on the money, when he says that even a blade of grass can become mysterious and miraculous. For me, it was trees. I started noticing trees about five years ago, and then birdsong soon after that. And what I realized was that these things were always there. They were always beautiful and miraculous and awe-inspiring but I just never heard them or saw them for what they truly were. I mean, I saw trees all the time, but I never actually took the time to look at trees. You know what I mean? I heard birds all the time, but I never took the time to listen to the birds. And what happens when you take the time and you actually pay attention is that these things begin to change. Or at least from your point of view, they begin to change. Anyway. More crazy ramblings for you. Hopefully you'll get something out of it. Hopefully you'll find this entertaining at least. Until next time, live well my friends.